thank for the uh, the kind invitation. Um, um, it's my great honor um, to uh, give the talk about uh, post COVID nineteen uh, condition. Uh, here is Dr. Bin Cao uh, from National Cen Center for Respiratory Medicine, um, at China Japan Friendship Hospital. Uh, I'm a, a pulmonologist uh, working uh, in uh, Beijing City. Um, as we know that the uh, uh, the the pandemic the pandemic of uh, uh, COVID nineteen is still uh, ongoing now. Uh, as of uh, this month, uh, there has been uh, more than uh, two hundred forty eight million cases. And among them, uh, from five million uh, died. Um, so, um, um, uh, COVID nineteen is the uh, largest uh, pandemic uh, during the last uh, uh, two uh, decades. There are a lot of uh, um, uh, research work has been published. Um, about the uh, pathophysiological uh, mechanism of, of COVID-19. Uh, uh, briefly, uh, the virus um, uh, bind uh, to the uh, uh, receptor, uh, that is uh, uh, AC2 uh, um, on the host cell uh, surface. And the, uh, another uh, protein uh, named Tempris uh, 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 cut the uh, the uh, as protein and the uh, uh, the virus enter the the host cells uh, and replicate inside of the host cells um, during uh, during the uh, 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 the uh, the infection uh, 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 the there are uh, 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 interaction uh, between the virus and and, and host cells. Um, um, the many uh, uh, injured uh, host cells, uh, including uh, epithelial cells and endothelial cells, uh, and and there is a a, um, a large amount of uh, host cells uh, damage, and and at the same time uh, there is a pro uh, inflammation. Uh, uh, occur uh, um, an immune response is there um, in some uh, in some patients um, there is a, a inhibition of the interfering uh, signal uh, by the virus and, and there is a, a TCS lymph depletion uh, so um, um, there is a dysregulation uh, of uh, immune response. And also um, uh, because of the endothelial cell damage and and and, and large amount of thrombo uh, thrombos uh, thrombos uh, thrombosis uh, occur inside the uh, the blood vessels, and this is uh, the key uh, uh, pathology of uh, of COVID nineteen. Um, at the at the beginning of the pandemic, um, um, we have experienced the uh, uh, severe and critical uh, COVID nineteen patients. Many of them have the uh, uh, the the similar clin clinical features of uh, bacteremia and, and bac bacteria sepsis, but we did not find the uh, the bacteria uh, evidence of such patients. So we call this kind of condition as viral sepsis. Uh, because uh, these patients have multi, multi organ dysfunction, uh, including uh, pneumonia, uh, respiratory failure, uh, acute respiratory uh, dis distress syndrome. And also, uh, uh, many of them have some uh, metabolic acidosis and, and internal environmental disorders. And some of them even have the uh, acute kidney injury and acute cardiac injury. Uh, so um, uh, we can understand that uh, uh, COVID-19 is not only uh, a disease that um, uh, impacts the, uh, the, uh, the lung and respiratory tract, 
uh, but also impact on the um, uh, um, um, outside uh, respiratory uh, organs, uh, including the heart, the kidney, uh, um, and the, uh, the, the spring. Um, so uh, this figure clearly show that there are multiple organ dysfunctions and, com and complications. Um, and, and it is easy to understand that if the patient have, have multiple uh, complications uh, uh, due to uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, infection, uh, after uh, discharge, the patient still may uh, still have some uh, 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 problem, uh, including uh, uh, cough, uh, shortness of breath, or uh, heart problems, or kidney problems. Uh, and the, uh, the the cognitive uh, problems. So this is uh, this is what we want to answer uh, the the long uh, long term um, consequence of patients affected with SARS CoV two. So uh, the the clinical uh, questions are there: Where the multi organ dysfunction and complications persist, and what are the long term consequences of COVID nineteen? Um, <clears throat> but this is not the first uh, first time um, in history that human beings um, are infected with a kind of coronavirus. Uh, during the last two decades, two um, coronavirus disease can cause severe disease uh, in human beings. One is SARS, and the second is uh, is MERS. And from the, the long-term follow-up study from SARS and MERS, we can uh, learn that the, uh, there are some physical um, problems, uh, including uh, persistent symptoms, uh, lung diffusing impairment, um, uh, disease exercise function, and the quality of life is, is decreased. And also there, there, are some, uh, there are some problems associated with social, uh, such as isolation, and on, uh, and and not able to return to uh, routine work, and also some of our patients may experience uh, such as anxiety, uh, depression, and the uh, uh, post trauma uh, 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 disease uh, PTSD. And from uh, an editorial uh, comments, uh, we can find that the follow up study of COVID, uh, COVID 19 recovery patients is very, very important uh, because uh, there are some uh, very important clinical uh, problems that had to be answered, uh, such as understanding the, the consequences, uh, including physical, uh, psychological, and social uh, problems. And we should also uh, understand in, in depth the prognosis of pathogenesis. And so um, the understanding of such uh, pathogenesis will allow us to early uh, a medical intervention. And also uh, uh, we have to provide data to determine the effects of COVID-19 on different populations, um, such as uh, females and, and, and the uh, elderly patients and children. And we also want to provide information on the development of vaccine and, and drugs and provide evidence for better benefits of COVID-19, not only in hospital, but also after uh, discharge. And we also uh, um, uh, get the information to prepare better uh, for potential outbreaks of pandemic in the future. Um, as early as um, uh, months of 2020, um, um, long uh, COVID-19 gained, uh, gained uh, widespread uh, attention uh, after ID doctor uh, in UK shared his uh, poor experience following COVID-19 in May. Uh, and so uh, um, long-term effect of COVID-19 has uh, become uh, the priority for uh, research. Um, I will show our um, uh, longitudinal cohort study of hospital survivors of COVID-19 uh, from, from China. Our objectives are uh, to describe the care consequence of COVID-19 in patient discharged 
uh, from hospital at both six months and 12 months after symptom onset. And we want to identify uh, the potential risk factors associated with the consequences, uh, in particular, uh, with disease severity. And we want to determine when COVID-19 survivors will, will return to their, uh, to their uh, baseline health status. Uh, this is our inclusion and exclusion. All laboratory confirmed COVID-19 patients who discharged uh, from hospital between January 2020 to May 2020. And, and, and those who died before this follow-up visit and those who uh, uh, follow-up would be very difficult because of uh, uh, psychotic disorder, dementia, or uh, readmission to other hospitals um, are excluded. Also, uh, patients who are unable to move freely due to concomitant uh, disease or immobile disease after discharge, and who decline to participate, participate and who are unable to be contacted, and those who live in other cities uh, or uh, nursing homes are uh, excluded from our uh, follow up study. Um, <clears throat> in, in our study, um, um, the research nurses um, call the the patient who, um, who are survivors uh, from the disease and made an appointment for face-to-face <clears throat> -face meeting uh, in the uh, department clinic. Um, during the, uh, um, the, during the uh, follow-up uh, uh, study, uh, physical examination, uh, self-reported symptom questionnaire, and the uh, MR, MRC uh, disciplinary score, and the, uh, the, the quality of life questionnaire and six minute walking test were, were examined uh, in the outpatient clinic uh, by a, a trained um, a doctor. And also the patient uh, 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 advised to give blood test, um, chest uh, CT scan and, and a primary function test. Uh, the, the chest CT scan, primary function test um, and the uh, the ultrasonograph um, um, uh, are mainly to those who had previously enrolled in our lopinumir uh, uh, trial uh, during uh, the uh, uh, during their stay in hospital. <clears throat> uh, this is a, a flow chart of six months follow up of our study. Uh, totally. 2,469 uh, patients uh, were um, were called, and, and the uh, um, 1,733 uh, com uh, completed the uh, the face to face com questionnaire physical examination and the laboratory test, six minutes uh, uh, walking uh, test, and 516 patients were undergo the primary function test ultrasonograph of lower uh, lower uh, limb veins uh, of an abdomen and a chest uh, HR, uh, HRCT. The median age of the follow-up study was uh, 59, 57 years, and the median follow-up time after some time turn on, onset is 186 days, and after hospital discharge, 153 days. Uh, the mortality after discharge is 1.3%. And, and among uh, 1,700 patients, uh, the, uh, the ICU admission was uh, 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 4%. Uh, this is uh, 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 symptoms of, at uh, a six months follow up. And, and we, uh, uh, this patient was divided uh, uh, based on the severity of illness during uh, hospitalization. Uh, secure three uh, means those hospitalization with, without oxygen, and and secure four with uh, with uh, oxygen and and and, and non invasive ventilation. Uh, secure five or six uh, with uh, invasive ventilation or ECMO, and and we can find that um, more than seventy percent of the patients received reported at least one symptom, and the most common symptoms are uh, uh, fatigue. Uh, muscle weakness and a sleep uh, difficulty. 
And, uh, and um, when we look at the, the quality of life um, by uh, EQ uh, 5D 5L questionnaire at six month uh, follow up, we can find that a more severe patient uh, endorse more uh, problem. And most of them are the, uh, the pain and discomfort, anxiety and depression. And the good news is that more, more than 90% of them have no problem of mobility and, and most of them can return their, their euro activity uh, and, personal, and, and personal care. <clears throat> and we also do uh, did the uh, uh, lung function test. And, and again, we find that the, uh, the, the more severe patient that is uh, classified as a scare five or six group, and they have um, a more impaired lung function test. Uh, such as the total lung capacity lower than 80% of those, and the residue volume uh, lower than 80% uh, uh, are predicted, and, and the, the diffusion, uh, um, 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 diffusion capacity um, by DRCO is lower than 80% is, uh, is also uh, severely uh, uh, um, um, damaged in those uh, uh, among, uh, among patients in secure five or six. But it seems that the six million walking distance is, uh, is uh, uh, relatively normal. And when we look at the long CT, uh, CT scan and six follow-up, and we can find that uh, about 50 of them have at least one of normal CT scan. And among them, the ground grass opacity is the most common, uh, common, uh, most common CT uh, 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 findings. And we also find that the, for uh, 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 scare uh, five or six um, uh, have the, uh, the more uh, long uh, volume uh, uh, in, uh, are, are still um, in problems. And when we look at the heteropulmonary organ manifestation at six months follow up, we can find that the, uh, uh, for patients with lymphocyte count, uh, count, count less than, uh, 500 per milliliter at acute phase, 97 of them have returned normal during follow-up. And we did not find deep venous thrombosis um, in, 30, uh, in 390 patients who underwent ultrasonograph follow-up. Um, but during follow-up, 58, uh, 58 patients were newly diagnosed diabetes. And 13% uh, of the patients who did not develop AKI during the acute phase in hospital stay um, ex exhibited a decline of uh, EGFR at follow up. So, uh, uh, um, um, make a summary of the finding of six months follow up. Uh, we can find that at six months after illness onset, discharge COVID 19 patients are, are mainly have. Uh, fatigue, muscle weakness, sleep uh, difficulty, anxiety, and, and depression. And 76% of, of, of those uh, still have at least one symptom. Uh, more severe patients during hospitalization have more severe impaired lung diffusing capacity and uh, abnormal chest imaging. And critical ear patients deserve more attention during hospitalization and after discharge. Um, but we, uh, but we still have some uh, unsolved uh, prob um, uh, questions after six months follow-up uh, because, uh, because we want to answer whether the current uh, uh, sequelae symptoms and worse lung function continue uh, to recover. And due to the lack of baseline before uh, COVID-19, it's unclear whether this patient can return to their previous care status. And, and it is not clear how long it takes for those patients to recover fully from COVID-19 or whether complete recovery is possible in every case. If they cannot fully recover, which patients are high risk of sequelae? And we also want to answer the question that the, uh, the health care ut utilization and work social status of recovered COVID-19 patients uh, during the long-term uh, follow-up. So we again uh, carried a one-year follow-up study of the same cohort, and, and we compare the health consequence of COVID-19 uh, uh, survivors between six months and six, uh, 12 months after symptom onset. And we want to determine 
whether COVID-19 survivor has returned their baseline status. And this is uh, uh, including uh, an excluding criteria and all uh, confirmed patients who discharge from hospital uh, were required to take, uh, take part in the uh, one year uh, follow-up study. And also those who died before a uh, one year follow-up and those who could, could not come back and who, um, uh, who, uh, who live in, in other cities or nursing homes are uh, excluded from the uh, study. During the, the, the 12 month follow up study, um, all participants um, um, were asked to uh, come back to the outpatient uh, for a face to face meeting. Um, um, during the, uh, the outpatient clinic uh, visit, uh, they did physical examination, MMRC, dyspnea score, six minute walking test and walking status questionnaire, and also the uh, spotted self reported symptom, uh, quality, of, quality of life, and health care and use. Uh, among them, 349 patients uh, completed the function test, lung function test. Uh, and 186 of them have uh, who had abnormal CT scan. Six Months follow were invited to receive another CT scan at 12 months, and and the uh, the community dwelling non COVID nineteen adults were were re recruited and uh, and to complete a symptom questionnaire. There is a flow of one year follow up study, um, and we can find that the uh, uh, one uh, thousand two hundred seventy six patients completed both six months and 12 months follow up. Um, among them, uh, secure three, uh, 300, secure four, uh, 800, um, and uh, secure five or six, and 90, 94 uh, patients. And the median follow up is 349 days after uh, symptom onset. And, and we can uh, compare the, the, the difference of uh, sequelae symptoms at, at six and 12 month follow up. And we can find that uh, uh, most of the uh, symptoms uh, uh, decrease from uh, uh, the proportion of uh, symptoms decrease from six months to 12 months. Um, um, in, uh, on average, about 69% uh, of uh, six, 69 percent at six months would decrease to 49% at 12 months, um, uh, including the, uh, the fatigue and muscle weakness, sleep difficulty, hair loss, smear uh, disorder, uh, and so on. And we also have a uh, uh, one to two uh, uh, match uh, inc include uh, non-COVID-19 patients uh, to compare whether the COVID-19 survivors can return to uh, uh, baseline status. And we can find that although um, uh, most of the patients uh, did not have, uh, 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 did not have a, a severe problem, but uh, the the, uh, the the COVID nineteen survivors uh, still have some uh, a problem um, more than non COVID nineteen uh, participants, uh, and such as the uh, 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 problems uh, of uh, mobility, uh, pain, uh, disorder, anxiety, and and depression. And also, uh, uh, we uh, detect the lung function and the, and the CT scan of uh, uh, survivors at 12 months. And it's, 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 it seems that uh, about uh, uh, 20, uh, uh, 20 to 30 of them have the uh, DRCO uh, lower than 80, 80 person, uh, persons. And, and at the, at the, at, uh, on the uh, 12 months follow up, uh, as much as uh, 40 of them still have uh, abnormal CT, uh, CT scan. And when we look at the, the hair status use and the, uh, the, the working status uh, at 12-month 12, uh, 12 visit, we can find that um, after discharge uh, during the one-year uh, follow uh, study, 18 of them had ever um, come back to all patient clinic and 13 of them had uh, hospitalization experience and one well, of them uh, visit emergency. And, and we, can, we can find that the 88% uh, of, the, of them who had, uh, uh, who had uh, previously uh, job 
uh, can return to their original uh, uh, um, work status. But we also uh, studied the risk factors associated with fatigue, muscle weakness, anxiety, uh, and diffusing impairment and uh, months follow-up. And we can find that compared with, with males, uh, females have high risk of fatigue and muscle weakness, anxiety or depression, um, and diffusing impairment term months. And we also found, found that uh, use of uh, corticosteroids at acute phase was a risk factor for fatigue and muscle weakness at, at 12 months. So I want to uh, make a summary of one year follow-up study. Uh, most COVID-19 survivors has a good physical and, and functional recovery uh, during 12 months follow-up. And, and most of them can return to their original work and life. The hair status of COVID-19 survivors at 12 months was still lower than that in the control, indicating that it will take longer for them to attain their baseline health status. An ongoing longitudinal follow-up is needed to better uh, characterize the natural history and pathogenesis or long-term consequences of COVID-19. I, I want to uh, uh, brief uh, the, the terms used in short-term and long-term of COVID-19. Uh, we use acute uh, COVID-19 uh, as those with symptoms and sign, signs of COVID-19 for up to four weeks. An ongoing subsequent symptom of COVID-19 means that the, uh, the signs of symptoms of COVID-19 from four weeks up to 12, months, uh, 12 weeks. And post-COVID syndrome or post-COVID condition means that the signs of symptoms that develop during or after an infection consistent with COVID-19 continue for more than 12 weeks. And those are not explained by or alternative diagnosis. Uh, uh, in the world, there are many uh, research, uh, research groups uh, uh, studying the, the, the long-term sequelae of, of COVID-19. And, 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 and we can find that the, uh, um, the, the symptom including the lung, uh, the liver, the kidney, uh, the, the GI, uh, the heart, the brain, the, uh, and the liver, and so on. Um, Although we do not know exactly the, the, the exact mechanism of lung, lung sequelae, um, but there are some uh, potential hypotheses, uh, including the, the chronic inflammatory uh, of, uh, of the sustained protection of pro-inflammatory ROS uh, that are uh, released into surrounding tissue. And also maybe due to the endothelial damage uh, and because of endothelial damage, complement activation, uh, plat platelet uh, activation uh, result in the development of a prolonged uh, uh, hyperinflammatory uh, state causing the symptoms. Also, uh, the hypothesis of heart sequelae is that the, uh, maybe there are some chronic inflammation of cardiomyocytes and the dysfunction of the, uh, uh, the, the autonomic uh, nervous system and the prolonged inflammation and cellular damage uh, um, prompt the fibroblast to secrete extracellular matrix small, uh, molecules uh, resulting in fibrosis and so on. Also uh, for uh, central nervous system, maybe the long-term immune response, hyperinflammatory and, and blood brain barrier damage and uh, the, the effect of the long COVID in, uh, lead to cognitive uh, impairment. And the, uh, the fatigue may be due to uh, 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 central, uh, peripheral, and the psychological factors uh, cause the uh, chronic uh, fatigue. Also, maybe uh, and the reason is due to the chronic inflammation of the brain, or the muscle, uh, and so on. Uh, in literature, uh, we can find that there are emerging uh, treatment of the uh, patient with, uh, 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 after uh, uh, post-COVID, uh, including the respiratory support, uh, such as hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, breathing, exercise, and singing, and some drugs such as Medlucast. And also there are some, uh, some clinical trial uh, against the fatigue uh, mainly exercise program and vitamin C uh, supplement, supplemental. And also the, uh, the cognate, cognate mind, uh, reposine uh, uh, clinical trial uh, for, relief, uh, for, uh, for the cognitive symptom uh, uh, relief 
and also uh, other uh, clinical trials for GI symptoms and suppress, suppression of the inflammatory, inflammatory uh, 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 response. But, but um, although um, uh, uh, we have done a lot of work uh, uh, in long-term follow-up, but, but there are still some knowledge gaps, uh, such as what is the precise epidemiology of post-COVID condition, and how will virus uh, or right affect the epidemiology and the severity of post-COVID uh, condition? And what are the um, major risk factors for post-COVID condition, and how to re reduce individuals risk uh, of developing long-term post-COVID uh, symptoms. And what is the uh, pathophysiolog uh, uh, path pathophysiological mechanism of COVID, post-COVID? And which symptoms or set of symptoms uh, can we use to classify post-COVID condition clinically and uh, phenotypically and with the aim uh, of Im improving diagnosis or treatment? And, uh, and uh, at the last, what is the optimal treatment and management strategy uh, for post-COVID condition and its strategy non-specific or where it require targeting and tailoring to specific uh, uh, patients. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, my colleagues in China, Japan Friendship Hospital, and my colleagues in uh, Wuhan uh, Jintai Hospital and Peking Union Medical uh, College and I, I also thank the, uh, the support from uh, uh, Chinese Academy of Engineering, uh, National uh, uh, Science Foundation of China and Sick China Network. At last, I want to uh, thanks uh, your uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much.